How's it, chaps? And uh, welcome back to another episode in the Burden Balls Garage. Uh, today, we are going to look at a couple of comments some of the viewers have left, specifically about DeVault's DCS 570B and uh, also DeVault's uh, DCS 355 multi oscillating tool. So stick around. We're going to have a look at some of the comments some of the viewers have left. To get straight into it, uh, the DeVault DCS570 circular saw. Interman77 says, unfortunately, I can't remember and I'm not anywhere. No, sorry, uh, that was my reply. Um, Just as a matter of interest, if you can remember, was there a ball bearing or bushing in the housing where the shaft goes into the housing at 835? Thanks. Well, Interman77, unfortunately, I can't remember and I've had a look at uh, some of my previous footage. I can't see it anywhere. So, uh, you are in luck today. For one day only special offer, we are going to partially tear the saw apart again, uh, specifically to have a look if that is a bearing or bushing. Uh, so stick around for that. As for some feedback on the saw, I've used it a lot more than I thought I would actually be using it. I mean, it is so, so convenient. You, you just walk to the cupboard, pull the saw out, well, maybe open the doors first, then pull the saw out, pop in a battery, walk to wherever you need to be, and bam, cut your finger off, no problem. Um, you know, that compared to having to try and find scrounge around for an extension lead takes a long time while you're probably contemplating life choices, that type of thing. And by the time you actually find the lead, then you've decided that no, it's not really worth cutting your finger off. So for now, for me, this machine has been a great purchase. One thing to keep in mind, though, is that uh, it does make quite a lot of dust. Uh, now, you can buy a small vacuum adapter fitting that goes on the guard. Uh, mine didn't come with one uh, because I didn't buy it as part of the kit, uh, but just keep that in mind for uh, when you are wanting to cut down some trees in your bedroom. It's going to make a major mess. Another slight regret that I have is this rip fence. Now, not that there's anything wrong with the performance of this rip fence, it's just that uh, the measurements on here are in inches. Now, I'm a man of science, so work in millimeters all of the time. Not that there's anything wrong with inches, uh, you know, the more the better. Um, I'm just not used to working in inches, so not that convenient for me. Okay, so now for the multi-oscillating tool, DCS355. Uh, one of the comments I got was from Silent Hill, not so silent. He says, so I watch this to see how to disassemble mine and you skip through it. Uh, and the next thing I know, it's in pieces. WTF. It's like Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. Not too sure. But look, dude, I am sorry. Uh, I do apologize for skipping over the boring part of removing the 11 T15 Torx head screws or fasteners and uh, the one three millimeter Allen head fastener. But you know, don't worry if you're not too sure how to take it apart, you probably have one of these things. And listen here, Buck, you just move the thing open, no problem. Jokes aside, I will tear it down for you again shortly, so stick around for that. As for some feedback on this splendid little machine, I haven't really used it as much as I thought I would. I've mainly used it just for small sanding jobs, that type of thing. Um, but at least it looks good. Okay, enough cuck talk, uh, let's get on with it. Okay, Interman77, I have a definite answer for you and uh, you can pretty clearly see that it is a roller bearing pressed into the aluminum housing. So I would say that's uh, quite a bit better than just having a oil light bushing in there. Um, this is probably likely gonna last quite a lot longer. As for the bearing on the plastic outer housing, uh, same make, HYA, China, and it's a 6001RS. Just before we actually get to tearing this thing down, I also wanted to read out Stephen Kenny's comment. He says, so there is a lot of metal to support the spring. Uh, we see this in the housing and it looked like an H, not an N to me when you were questioning the motor. Thanks for the breakdown, in the market for one now. I have two others, one is a Makita cordless and it's bulky and heavy, the other is a rocker and it's corded. I switched out my cordless tools from Makita to DeVault. Does anybody buy aftermarket batteries for these tools and how do they hold up? Well, Stephen, uh, while I do agree with you, there is quite a lot of metal structure underneath the clamshell or this yellow part of the clamshell. Uh, that's not going to be the weak point. The weak point is likely going to be these two plastic pieces that are part of the, the actual lever itself. Um, there's not a lot of meat around that bolt and this is quite a stiff spring so that is the point where it's actually likely to break, not really in here. Now I only really noticed that uh, once 
I had opened it up last time. As for the batteries, I only use original DeVault batteries, so unfortunately can't comment on any aftermarket ones. So, however, there is a channel called AVE, Arduino vs. Evil, I think is what it stands for, and uh, that chap actually explores the difference between the aftermarket and original batteries. So I'll put a link to his video somewhere. It's uh, actually quite an interesting watch. So the first thing we have to remove is this silver plastic lever. Now it's held in place by a three millimeter bolt. It uses a 5.5 millimeter socket and a number three Allen key. See, and uh, there it's part. Once that bolt is out, then the silver lever just pops right off, no problem. Now that we have removed the lever, all that we need to do to split the clamshell is to remove these 11 T15 Torx head fasteners. For this uh, center fastener, unfortunately, it is fairly deeply recessed and uh, I'm not going to reach it for with uh, this type of screwdriver. So um, luckily these uh, torques have also got flats, so you can use a flat screwdriver. I think I'm going to have to use that to get uh, this center fastener out. I think we are going to have the same problem with this uh, fastener. It's also fairly deeply recessed. One last thing not to forget is to remove the sticker that goes over both halves of the clamshell. Once that is done and uh, all of the fasteners have been removed, the clamshell now will just split open fairly easily. Basically just lifting up and there we go. That's how we open it. Um, the rest of the stuff uh, we covered in a previous video. And uh, Stephen, there's your bit of uh, metal or a um, bit of the metal structure within the plastic housing, within the, the, the front point. That's not likely where it's going to break. The point where it is going to break is going to be these little ends over here. Um, but anyway, hopefully uh, they have bolted strong enough, have reinforced it with enough, enough glass fiber. It is glass fiber reinforced to 50%. So it's going to be fairly, fairly strong. Uh, just one thing to remember is that you don't really want to be dropping it on these points. Uh, otherwise, that's likely going to cause it to break a whole lot quicker. So chaps, that's it for today's video. I uh, hope you liked it. If you did, hit the little thumbs up button. Subscribe if you haven't subscribed already. And uh, yeah, just carry on leaving me comments and uh, all that good stuff. It's uh, always nice to hear from you. Yeah, so I guess we'll see you next time. Cheers.